Hey guitar champion, what's going on? Justin Hombach here, back from my practice cave. Oh, welcome to today's video where we are going to take a look at the full lesson of Jammin' Eye by John Petrucci from his newest record, Terminal Velocity. Here we go. Alright, Gemini from Terminal Velocity. Well, there isn't much to say about this song other than it's a pretty awesome song. I really like this one. It's actually a song he composed back in the 90s. Um, he played the song, or there are some video footage where he's playing the song, or parts of the song, uh, in 94 at NAMM, uh, playing for Mesa Boogie. Um, so, and yeah, he took this old idea, this old song, and add some new ideas and put it into this new kind of sound and this new kind of style and to put it on his newest record of course and after the cover of course we are taking a look at the full lesson note for note and this this is the last lesson for my Petrucci months we're going to move on next month October I'm going to make a video about what's getting on in October for you pretty soon I uh, can't wait for October it will be a really 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 interesting month if you like the tabs for today's lesson, today's video, of course, you will find them in the description box. There is a download link where you can download them for free. Okay, but before we start, let's go to our shoutout section. This section where I'm going to take two recent comments, I'm going to answer them, going to respond to them. This is my way to say thank you to the community out there because without you guys, I wouldn't do those videos like this one here. So let's check out the comment section. Here we go. Okay and, the okay, and the first comment is from my uh, Altitudes cover by Jason Becker. And this one is from a really, really awesome guy called Jason Shell. And he was writing, absolutely amazing. I've been telling all my friends about your channel, how do you transpose all these songs by ear? Uh, what's the question? By ear? Do you train ear training f away from the instrument? So first of all, thank you for spreading the word and thank you for sharing this content and this channel to your friends. It's a really, really great honor for me. And secondly, now I'm not transposing all by ear. When uh, the John Petrucci single came along, the Terminal Velocity single, that one was transposed by ear because there weren't any tabs out there. Um, so I had to transpose them. Sometimes I transpose when it's when I want to be the first who made some YouTube covers, like for the Dream Theater, the John Petrucci or the Unprocessed stuff. But most of the time I do use tabs um, and then I'm check them or do maybe correct them and do my own twists and turns on them especially by the Jason uh, Richard and uh, not the Jason Richardson the Jason Becker stuff because there aren't any live footage or really really rare live footage out there uh, where you can see Jason's playing his music yeah but I had a lot of ear training back in the day when I was studying jazz guitar in music college and music high school um, we had ear training as uh, as something that we should do every day and we had some tasks in there and um, even some exams in there so yeah, yeah I did this more when I was in when I graduated my music degree and my jazz degree but nowadays I'm not transcribing that that often anymore all right so thank you but thank you anyways for that comment let's check out comment number two and the next comment is from my Gemini cover and it's from Ronnie Lopez and he was writing or asking me why not the harmonic. I think you mean harmonic um, and I'm not quite sure which harmonic do you mean and um, I'm not really want to take out this comment but I want to say something in general. Um, I'm really really happy about that I'm not getting any kind of troll comments or hater comments um, on the one hand this could mean that my content is good but on the other hand this could mean that I'm not famous because some people are saying you are only famous when you get uh, when you get troll and hate comments um, but if you have a critique to my playing which is totally fine and I really accept that and I love well deserved critique and um, this is my way how I can grow um, then please describe the critique a little bit more I was actually searching for a comment uh, of a cover of mine where some but I didn't found it where somebody was uh, writing that I, uh, I'm rushing and I'm lacking in all the emotions and the phrasing is not good and stuff like this. This is pretty fine if this is the way how you think about my videos. But please write me down where do I'm rushing? 
or where is the phrasing a little bit off or what do you think where I should improve so I can improve but only saying you are bad is not a way how somebody other how others can improve and when I have critique on somebody else I always perfectly describe him where to work on or where I think he should work on to make a little bit better because we all want to grow we all want to improve so why helping not why not helping each other all right okay so much for the comment for the shout so much for the shout out section away with that stupid thing let's start with the lesson a little disclaimer before the lesson I had a lot of trouble sometimes with my focus on my camera sometimes uh, the guitar is out of focus. I'm really sorry for that, um, but and there, there are only a few seconds, but when you think, ah, it's out of focus, don't skip that few seconds, it will be gone away. But, so, so far you know. Alright! Okay, first let me demonstrate you the intro of Gemini. Here we go. <laughs> First we're starting off with this bending idea and this melody. We're first bending from the 10th fret to the 12th fret on the B string, from the A to the B. Then resolving to the G, 8th fret on the B string, and going to the E, 9th fret on the G string. Next phrase goes like this. Bending from A to B again, but then resolving into the A, playing the F sharp, G, and then we're bending with those double stop bends from the 11th fret on the B string to the C, and from the 13th fret, the C on the B string to the D. Now comes this pretty cool septuplet tapping idea, and there we are first starting off with the notes 7, 8 and 10 on the E string, which are the introduction of the tapping, uh, the B, the C and the D on the E string, and then we have this, I said it again, septuplet um, a tapping idea, which means we have seven notes in the time of one quarter note. So, now comes a little bit tricky thing, I have to tap it this way, because otherwise my focus will be disturbed too much when I have it here. Sometimes my focus go crazy and I have to make this tapping section, I have to record this tapping section now for the third time. So let me try it this way. We are slowly tapping one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we are first tapping into the 12th fret and then releasing, but we're not moving the left hand. We have one, two, three, four, and now we're doing the pull offs five, six, going to the open E string, seven. We are doing, oh, I hope the focus will be right, sorry if not. Um, we're doing this one four times on this kind of idea, here on this uh, section here, seven on the B, C and on the D string. Then we're playing it two times on the A, the B and the C. But we're still keeping the tapping hand here on the 12th fret. And we're going to E, uh, sorry, G, A and B and to F sharp, G and A. And always with the open E string in between of that. All right, and then we're moving on to this melody. First we're outlining E minor seven accord. Going to the major six. Playing the A. And we're playing the A with index finger because we have to do a position shift. And we're playing with the ring finger, the 16th fret on the G string. Playing the um, 16th fret on the D string and the 18th fret on the G string. And before that, sorry, as we are sliding with our ring finger, that's the reason why we're using the ring finger, from the 16th fret to the 18th fret on the G string. Now comes this little scale idea. We're playing 16, 17 on the D string, 16, 18 on the G string, and 15, 17, and 19 on the B string. Then comes this descending and again ascending melody. We're doing the triller between 15 and 17. 14, 17. And then we are playing. Sorry? Ah oh, no, we're not playing the 17th fret on the B string, we're playing the 17th fret on the E string. Sorry? 
Then we're going to 19, bending to 21. And resolving again to 19. Now comes this open string idea. So. And we have the open E and on the open B string. And on the open E we are playing starting on 1920. And I only say the two frets that we are playing. And it's always low fret, high fret, low fret, open string. And all playing with hammer and pull offs. And we're playing 1719, 1517, going back to 1719, 1517, 14, 15. Then again ascending, 15, 17, 14, 15, 12, 14. Now we're going to the B string, playing um, 15, 17, 13, uh, 15, 12, 13, playing 13, 15, 12, 13, 10, 12, 12, 13, 10, 12, 8, 10, 10, 12, 8, 10, 7, 8, and resolving into the E on the G string, the 9th fret. And this is the complete intro of Gemini. And now we're going to the famous section of Gemini, the picking exercise, like I would say it. But it's also a pretty great uh, musical idea. So let's check out the next section. Okay, let me play you the main part, the main idea of this picking section slow. Here we go. <laughs> Okay, we have always two notes per string. We have always alternate picking, so up, down, going to the next string. And therefore, we have an even number of notes per string. We can stay with downward pick landing. All right, but we are first starting off with the D and on the G string playing 7, 9, 7, 11. Going to 7, 12, back 7, 11. Then we're staying here on the G string with the 7 11, but we're moving with our index and middle finger to the A string. And going to 7 9. Then we're taking this shape here with the string skip in between and playing it one string set higher. So on the D and on the G string. Sorry. But here we have a little bit more of a stretch between the 7 and the 12th fret. Now we're going again to the A string. And going here from stretch position into close position. So practice this movement as well. Then we're going to this one. Playing 7, 9, 10, 9, 12. And a beautiful C major 7 chord. Playing the A fret on the B string and the 12 fret on the B string, still C major 7. Pretty cool shape. You can use this as well over C major 7. And then we're taking this shape here and transforming it to the G and to the E string, playing 11, 12, and 10, and 14 on the E string. And then we're outlining this E minor 7 here, playing 7, 9, 7, 10 on the E and on the G string, starting on the G string. Then we're playing those arpeggios diatonic. This kind of sequence, sorry. This note here. Yeah! Getting a little bit lost here. So first up we're starting with a beautiful G major arpeggio, starting on the 7th fret. And we're always playing 7 root 3rd 5th. Then we're going to the 5th of the next diatonic chord, which is A minor 7, playing 5th, uh, sorry, 5th, minor 3rd, root 7. In frets we have 7, 8, 7, 10, 12, 8, 10, 10 8, yes. Going to the next diatonic um, major uh, 7, oh, sorry, diatonic 7, minor 7 arpeggio, in this case B minor 7, but this time again starting on the 7th. Going to C major 7, starting on the 5th. And now we're jumping straight to E minor 7. So it's always this mixture between ascending and descending. Now the transition to the next part goes like this. 
playing 20, 15, 17, 15, then 19, 15, 17, 16, then 19, 16, 17, 16. Now this is a pretty good section for your right hand coordination and your speed picking because the tempo is not that easy, it's pretty fast uh, for that because it's not uh, like speed picking in the shreddy kind of way, it's not like this. You need to be more precise by this kind of exercise and this kind of musical idea and therefore this is a pretty good exercise to be a little bit more precise or to work on your position and especially on your endurance because all those stretches this can be really really tough especially in the beginning to keep this the strengths uh, right at the correct level and to have the endurance to play through this, through this part. Okay, so now let's continue. Now we are modulating in a different key, in a different scale, but the shape stays the same. So everything that we have here, we are now transforming here, starting not on the 7th fret with our index finger, but now starting on the 14th fret on our index finger. And the rest is the same. Just play it up here. Up to that point, this one here. Now we are playing a chromatical idea for the transition. We are first starting on the 19th thread, playing 19, 20, 21, 22, playing the same on the E string, but ascending and descending, descending, then we're going starting on the 21th fret, going chromatic to the 18th fret, now we're going with our index finger to a position shift to the 17th fret, playing again ascending, position shift with our index, playing descending, now on the G uh, D string, the same frets, and now the octave. Sorry, yeah. Yeah. All right, are they correct? Let me check real quick because sometimes uh, you can get a little bit, um, yeah, a little bit um, lost in between this chromatical madness here, especially when you want to play it uh, slow. So let me check this one real quickly. I was nearly correct, but everything one fret higher. We're starting on the 21th fret, not the 21st fret. It's the same. So let me play this one again for you. Yes. And then we have the last bit, uh, which leads us to the next part. And the last bit goes like this. We're first starting on the 12th fret of the E string, playing 12, 14, 12, 16 on the D string. Playing this one twice, and then we're playing the same thing, one string set higher, and another string set higher, but this time with the 17th fret on the pinky. Now we're playing this one with the 17th fret on the pinky, one fret, uh, one string shape higher, oh, sorry, not one string shape, one string set higher, twice, and now we're moving this one up two frets. And now, before the next part, we have this really, really nasty and ugly triplet kind of e mixolydian arpeggio. And let's check out the next arpeggio, which leads us to the heavy riff part. Here we go. This is this nasty triplet E mixolydian, well, not really mixolydian, mixolydian is the wrong term here, but E major arpeggio kind of shape. We're first starting off with 17th fret going to the 14th fret, sorry, 17 going to the 16th fret, playing 17 on the B string and 16 on the G string, outlining this uh, E major arpeggio. Then we are sliding to the, uh, to the octave of our first note, 
playing the E again on the higher B string, sliding to the 13th fret, playing 14 on the D string and 16 on the um, A string. Now we are using a lot of chromatical movements in one phrase, playing for example this idea here. Now we are going chromatical to the 13th fret, playing this idea here. With those uh, slides in between, again chromatical movement. Uh, sorry. Then we're playing 11, 12, 14. Doing a little trill between 11, 12 on the A string. Playing 14, 12, 11. And again, chromatical from the 14th fret to the 11th fret. And going up to the 14th fret on the A string. And you see, it's always a mixture between chromatical here and here. It's always this kind of idea, we're going from the left side, and this kind of idea where we're going into this angle. And this leads us to the heavy part, so let's check out the heavy riff section. Here we go. So, the riff section starts with a big and open, really heavy sounding D power chord. Oh yeah, Paul Gibbons' favorite chord. Trucci and he also loved this chord as well. It's just so heavy. And here for we are playing from the A string. Oh, I have to don't have to explain this pretty well. I think when you're playing Petrucci stuff, I think you should know an open D power chord. Okay, let's continue. So we're going through the riff section by section after a little bit of whammy woo, dive bombs he's doing here and there. Uh, we are playing this main riff and we are starting with reversed power chords. So those are power chords where the fifth is in the bass and the root note is uh, in the higher string. Like here for example we are playing D power chord but we are only strumming the A and the D string. So the fifth is in the bass and root note is on the higher note. Then we are playing this E and F power chord, but playing it with the uh, second fret and the third fret as a bar and a slide. I'm going to G. Now we're playing this line. And here for we're first sliding with our pinky in the fifth fret of the A string from the fourth fret. And we're playing with our ring finger four, three, one. C on the A string with the ring finger again, and we're playing this chromatic idea, which leads us, sorry, it's all the one chord, to the B flat power chord. No, uh, it's an E flat power chord. And again, D. So it's this kind of movement here. Okay, let me play this one again. Going to the next movement of this big power chord section and we're starting the same way after we are playing the open D power chord, playing E and F and now we are sliding not to the G, we are sliding to the A flat. Then comes this line, we're first again sliding to the first fret but not with our pinky, with our ring finger, playing 3, 4 on the E string, 3 on the E string and now we are sliding with our pinky to the 8th fret, resolving to the D. Now comes this whole tone kind of lick, and here on the section, especially on the lick for the next section, Petrucci is experimenting a lot with whole tone, uh, whole tone, whole tone back in the day. And the lick goes like that. Really nice whole tone lick, which creates this really interesting color and tension in between of those. Kind of riff idea. So, and in frets we have 4 on the E string, then we're going to the A string 5, 6 E, 2 E, 3 F, uh, A, again 4 on the E string, but this time with our ring finger, and low E string. So basically, 
here we have F sharp augmented kind of arpeggio, which is also kind of playing a lot augmented arpeggios in the next section to create this kind of whole tone sound. Then we're playing C and the um, G sharp again. And going to the E. Let me play you this section again. Going to the next sequence of this power chord section and it goes like this. We're starting the same way like in the first time. It's like to the fifth fret here, not to the sixth fret, not like in the last time, but this time onto the fifth fret. And then we're playing this kind of bluesy line. First we are bending the sixth fret on the B string to the seventh fret, but playing this time at the same time the fifth fret on the E string. And we're playing 16 notes, 7, 5. Sliding from the 6th fret to the 5th fret. I'm playing 5, 3, now going to the A string, 5, going to the E string, 3, 0, 1. And then again the chromatic movement. But this time we are not playing the E sharp to D here. We're playing it bigger here. And the next part is the same part like in the second time. And now comes this whole tone run. Which leads us to the next beautiful melody. And this one is just basically the whole tone scale. So we have the same shape but moved in different frets. First starting the second fret, playing 2, 5, 6. Then on the A string, 2 times 3, 5, 7, 3, 5, 7. Then 2 times 5, 6, 8 on the D string. And then 1 time 5, 7, 9. G string. Going to the beautiful melody section. Here we go. Now the beautiful part of the next section aren't the melody necessarily, or isn't the melody necessarily. It's more like the chord progression that we have here. And basically we have two main chords. D major 7 and B flat major 7. Now I don't want to go into detail of which note we are playing. I want to talk here a little bit more about how Petrucci is thinking over those two chords because I think this is a little bit more interesting. The melody isn't that hard. You can play it from the taps and with the ear. Um, but I think uh, the concept behind it is really interesting. And there's a little story behind this uh, melody which I'm, <laughs> which I'm going to tell you right now. I have to be honest. I totally ripped off that melody once with my own prog metal band called EOS. And you can listen to that song on CD, you can listen to that song here on YouTube because we made a live EP where we also had the song. The song is called A Novelist Bite. A short story about it, it's a 12 minute instrumental epic song. It's really really difficult to play um, and it's about a man who gets stung by an Anopheles and who gets through some fever dreams and the dreams are getting worse and worse and worse and the melody which connect every dream yeah, is this one here. And I think you know this melody, right? Well, yeah, it's from Gemini. And back in the day, 10 years ago, I wrote that song around 10 years ago. I thought, this song will never be on the CD. This song will never be on a record. It's an old 
rare video from Petrucci playing that melody. That melody is beautiful as hell, but he will never release this song on CD. Yeah, well, we did now, 10 years later. So, yeah, I totally ripped off that melody by thinking nobody will notice. And now everyone who knows my prog metal band will notice who's uh, listening to that song. And there are actually some people who are writing me um, when they first heard the song Gemini on the new Protitchi record and saying, well, Justin, there's a certain melody which kind of remembers me of something. I uh, haven't you played that melody in an awful spite and I'm like, yeah, sorry, I totally ripped off that melody. <sighs> So yeah, this is my little story, my background story about uh, the Gemini melody. <laughs> Let's continue with that melody. Wish you a lot of fun. Continue with the lesson. Cheers. So yeah, I was in love with those chords. And let's check out how Petrucci is playing over those two chords. Well, the main problem here is those two chords, D major and B flat, B, <laughs> D major and B flat major, aren't in the same scale. Um, B flat is the flat six uh, compared to D. It's from the D the flat six. So, but we ha don't have a flat six in D major scale. We have a raised six, a major six. So we have to think in two scales, in D major and in B flat major. And Petrucci is using some certain notes to combine those two chords and those two scales in this beautiful melody. What he's doing exactly, he's playing with one note which is a part, a half tone step, and this little half tone step connects both world, both magical sides, D major and B flat major. And I'm talking about the F sharp and the F. The F sharp in D is the major third. <laughs> And the F is the, um, the um, sorry, here, the F is the fifth of B flat. So we have a lot of movement like this. So he's thinking more on intervals, like playing with the major third of D major, going to the minor third of D minor, which is also in the same way the um, the fifth of B flat major. And I think this is a way how he could think of it, because some certain players, like Pat Martino or myself as well, I rather not think B flat major over that B flat chord, I think D minor. D minor is a parallel a minor scale from B flat major. And I would say the good thing here is when I have to improvise over both chords, it's easier for me to uh, navigate through the through the whole big concept and universe of the fretboard by having in my mind one root note. Of course, what we are hearing is not D minor, but what I'm thinking and navigate through this map is D minor. And um, yeah, with that, keeping one root note in my thinking uh, is a little bit easier for me. D major, D minor. D major, D minor, D major, D minor. And so on. And I would say that Petrucci is maybe thinking the same way in this because you can see some movements and those movements are really important. Like for example, from the F sharp to the F. Or another big important movement is from going from the A, which is the fifth of D major. Here the A to one half step higher, B flat, which is a root of our B flat major. So when you have two chords and those two chords are from two different scales, which lying really, really far away compared to which kind of uh, sharps and flats they have uh, and where they are, um, where their position are in the so-called quinton. What's the English word for it? Quint fifth, circle fifth, circle fifth, quinton circle in German. Uh, 
And I mean, the major is Edu, it's, it's something around here at one o'clock or maybe two o'clock. And B flat major is here at uh, uh, at 10 o'clock. No? So, um, seeing those movements in half tone step can be really, really important to create beautiful melodies over those chords or over any chords which are apart in different scales or which are, yeah, which contains out of these different scales. And Petrucci is using this one here as well and I think this concept is really, really interesting. The melody isn't that hard, but it sounds so beautiful because of that concept. All right. So I, can, I think you can check out the melody for yourself, but let's check out a few certain little ideas, which maybe we should talk about, okay? You see, we have two times this kind of part, and the first section that combines that part, the two bars, where he is playing in B flat augmented sound, or you could also call it F sharp augmented because the thing is augmented as a symmetrical chord and in all the inversions it has the same kind of interval structure. And there over that he's again playing a whole tone idea. And this one it's uh, in this case it's this one here. And you see this kind of movement is the same like in the run. And this is the way how Petrucci is thinking in a uh, whole tone scale, like this one finger shape scale where he is moving it up one fret. Well, you have to be careful between the G and the B string. There, of course, of course it's two frets because of the tuning. All right, this is the first little thing I want to talk about. Let's check out the next one. Here on the next idea. He's outlining again B flat augmented. And another cool thing about B flat augmented is B flat augmented is also D augmented. So here we have a connection point where we can connect again those two kind of uh, chords which are from different scales into one sound. We can combine them in one sound and this is the augmented sound. And this is a pretty cool sweep shape. So you can, oh sorry, you can learn this and play it for your own when you want to have when you want to have a really cool augmented kind of sweep shape and sound. And it's also again a pretty good exercise for our row technique because we have to roll our middle finger, which we don't use do that often. So it's a pretty interesting shape as well. Those were those two little interesting ideas I want to point out a little bit, those augmented kind of arpeggios. And the rest of the melody, as I said, is pretty easy. So use your ear and the tabs and you can learn it by yourself. I don't have to say too much about the phrasing and the bending stuff and so on. Um, yeah, but I want to talk a little bit more about the next section, this kind of open string section with a lot of energy and tension in it. And I love this section, so let's check out the next section, here we go. Okay, let me play you this section slow. Sorry. Okay, let me try to play this one up to tempo. Yes, 
All right. And here we have a mixture between 1416 and 1516, which are two bar, two odd meters uh, that are really subtle. You don't really hear the difference, but it's important. And you can only hear that in the last note of the sequence. Now, but how does the sequence go? Let's check this one out in the first case. And most of the time we're playing in G harmonic minor scale or over the chord D because D is our root note, it's D fridge and dominant. But in two uh, cases we have more like a melodic minor content, a melodic minor concept. And so we don't have D Phrygian dominant, but more D mixolydian flat six but only in two uh, of those uh, sequences um, the first sequence starts uh, direct with the D mixolydian flat six um, kind of idea and it goes like this and you see in the last note from the first bar I only played the C here and the second time I do the pull off to the open A string. Now let's check out this sequence so we can easily transfer it to the rest of the scale. First we are switching between the D and the G string, starting with the G string. And we're playing those two notes on the D string in thirds. This thing. And going then to the A string. So without all of the open strings, the melody actually goes like this. And the only time when we are playing um, melodic minor, G melodic minor, or D mixin Lydian flat six is in the first time. Because we have because we have the major nine here. And then on the second time as well. Here we go. Oh well, here it's actually a little bit more D minor. We don't have the major third here again. We have the minor third. And now you're taking this sequence and playing it up with the scale, and but always with the open string in between. But I recommend to first go through the melody and the notes itself and then add the open strings to it because that's a little bit easier to I would say to recognize the finger shapes and all the different notes from the scale patterns of the sequence. All right, I love this lick and after that we're playing this one here. Again, a G harmonic minor kind of lick with the open G in between. We're starting with 15, 7, 15. Playing 17, 19, 17. Again, 15, 17, 15. 14, uh, 15. 12, 14. And 11, 12. And then we're playing this D minor 9 or D with the Phrygia um, 9 and the minor 6 arpeggio. This is really exotic kind of uh, pentatonic idea and it definitely has a name like uh, what's a, what is the hip name that everybody's calling the scale I don't know the uh, Hindu the Hindu Bami Goreng uh, number 48 with sweet sour sauce scale I don't know it's this exotic Asian kind of scale and a lot of people are giving them fancy names, but I think those fancy names are not necessarily. For me, it's pentatonic with the flat 9, and the flat uh, 6, and the 5th, and the 11th. This is how I see this kind of scale right here. But Petrucci is playing this one to go to the next solo or to the first solo section and the first solo is this samba solo and I really like this one it's one of my favorite parts of the whole record so let's check out the first solo here we go and the first part of the solo is actually a clean solo so let me change to my clean channel 
Weird Creek. And the chords beneath the solo, the first section, is E flat major, F major, and G minor. And those three chords are from the G minor scale. And right now when I'm thinking about it, G minor is the parallel minor scale of B flat major, not D minor, like I said a few minutes earlier over this beautiful section here. Little mistake from my side. G minor is the parallel minor scale, but, but you can use this D minor, D major concept I've told you there again uh, as well. So it's not a problem, it's only a false thing I've said to you. Fake news, some fake news I told you. So, um, let's check out the solo. We are first starting with this kind of rhythmical idea. And there we are, here we are sliding, playing some 60 note triplets or even some 30 second notes in the beginning. And sliding from the 8th fret to the 7th fret on the G string going from 7 5 to, yeah, from going from 7 to 5 on the G string, going from 5 to 3 on the G string. And then we are playing this melody. And here we are starting on the G with our pinky, playing G, A, B, C, sorry, yeah, C. Playing it uh, in descending again. But here we have a position shift, so the fingering is a bit different when we're going back to the G. We are now playing with the ring finger. So we can play the 60 note triplet um, kind of idea with this finger shape. Sometimes it's tapped like this. And it's this case it's easier to go from the A to the E string because we have uh, the same shape here but I think it's pretty hard to have only one note on the D string played as a 16 note triplet. i rather have this kind of sequence and then slide to the F. Oh and then we are in the F major chord and here the first phrase of the F major is this kind of phrase which leads us again to the E flat major. Here we're starting on the F, F, G and sliding to A, playing C and D and now we're playing this same thing in the octafire. Typical Petrucci thing, playing a phrase and playing it in octafire. And now we're playing F, uh, A, C, going to the B flat, playing G on with our pinky on the 8th fret of the B string and resolving to the A. So let me play it up to that point. Now we are playing some five note sweeps. And we are starting with this D minor. Playing eight, five pulling and sweeping from the B to the G string, six, seven, and pulling into five. Then we are playing an B major with the um, raised six. And here we are starting on the eighth fret on the B string, going to the uh, sixth fret on the B string, seven G, and then we are um, sweeping to the, from the G to the D string, and playing eight and seven on the D string. And we're playing G minor here, with a little bit of roll technique, starting on the A as 6th fret on the B string, pulling to the 3rd, uh, 3rd fret G string, 5D, 3rd D, and then we're playing D minor again. So this one here an octave below, a little bit of different fingering, but they are the same notes. And the first note is always played a little bit longer than the rest. So we don't have one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. We have more like. Okay, and after this comes this phrase. Sorry, this I played this one wrong. This is the correct way. We're starting with this F. Arpeggio with the uh, Lydian 11 in it. Sorry, E flat arpeggio with the uh, Lydian 11 in it. So we have E flat, G, A, 
E flat. Then we're playing C D E flat on the G string. Then we're going here to the A, playing outlining this B flat major seven arpeggio with the eleven in it. So we have A B flat D E flat F. And we're playing this one octafier, but without the E flat. Now we have a really beautiful rhythmical idea, really beautiful melodic idea, and it goes like this. We're first starting here on the 11th fret of the E string, pulling to the 10th fret, playing this one twice, and going to the 12th fret, the octave of it, on the G string. Now we are going with our ring finger to the 10th fret, and now we are keeping this sequence and playing it down the scale. So, 10-8, 8, eight uh, 6, and 6-5. Six, uh, Resolving into the E flat again. I'm going back to the E flat chord. This one, the last one was played over the G minor chord. This one. Now, over the next F, uh, E flat major chord, we're playing this idea. And here we are first starting with this G minor. 7 arpeggio and this one is played over the E flat major and therefore we are creating an E flat major 9 sound. And we have 10, 12 and then we're sweeping through the 11th fret on the B string to the 10th fret on the E string, playing the 13th fret E string and resolving to the E flat. The second time he's not sweeping, he's only playing 10, 12 and then string skipping to 10, 13. Sorry. And then we're playing this melody. Going to the next chord again, the F major chord. And here we have this idea. We're coming from... And now we are playing this shape here, 13, 15, 13, 17, going back, descending, or but only to the 15th fret, going to the 18th fret on the E string, and back to the 17th fret. Then we're playing 13, 10, 13, 11, 10 on the B string, and now we have this kind of six note pentatonic idea. Oh, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five. Ah, six note and five note. Four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five. Right, again. And then this is also a pretty cool, interesting picking idea, but it's also really typical Petrucci esque because. Ah, we know this. It's our typical Petrucci two note per string kind of major seven arpeggio idea. All right, going to the next phrase. We are playing the last phrase over the bar. So we're not stopping at the bar. At the end of the bar, we're playing over it, which is pretty cool. And now, and by over it, we, I mean we are resolving to the 10th fret. We're coming from resolving here on the 10th fret of the D string, and then we're playing this G minor 9 arpeggio over the E flat again, G minor over the E flat. You see it's E flat, um, E flat major 7 9 chords, uh, chords. So Petrucci is also thinking a lot in suspension and uh, not suspension in uh, what is the right word? Um, whew. Substitutions. So and then we're playing the 12th fret on the G string, sliding to the 14th fret, going from 14th fret 
to the 15th fret, but with a different kind of fingering, so we can play the 13th fret on the B string. And we have this melody, this pull off here, 6, 4, 3 on the B string. I'm playing down the scale, 5, 3, 2 on the G string, and 5 on the D string. Then we are playing in tremolo, picking the 3rd fret of the G string, and then we're playing this high speed shredding line. And here first we're starting with 3, 5, uh, 3, 4, 6, 3, 5, 6 on the B and on the G uh, E string and we are staying on the B and on the E string and we can use one, most of the time, one pick sending um, because we only have that first time here on the B string where we have an uneven number of notes per string. So we have upward pick sending and then we can stay with the upward pick sending. Because after that, we always have an even number of notes per string. So we're going through the scale, and after we're playing 3, 5, 6, we're going to the next position, and now we're playing descending. Now we're going again to the next position of the G minor scale, playing again ascending. Next position descending. Next position ascending. And now we're playing in descending shapes, but we're staying on the E string and we're moving up the scale two times and resolving into the 17th fret. So we have ascending, descending, ascending, de uh, sorry, descending, ascending, descending, descending, resolving. And this was the clean solo of the samba solo of this bossa nova kind of thing. And now we are checking out the distorted solo, the lead solo, and I love this one as well, especially those beautiful sweeps at the end. So let's check out the next part. So now the electric solo. The electric solo starts with the bending from the 18th fret, and then comes this big shred line here. And here we are first starting with, we are in the G minor scale, we're starting on the D and playing ascending to the G in 3 upper string. Then comes a little bit of chromaticism, we're playing 15, 16, 17, and now we're playing 18, 17, 15, 18, 16, 15 on the E and on the B string. And then we are continuing playing this one an octave below on the G and D string, same shape, and also on the A and E string. And we're getting one position higher and playing the scale A7. Resolving into the A. Then comes this melody here. And here first we are playing 14, 15, 17. And then we are playing... This idea here. First setting 17 on the G string, then 5, 6, uh, 15, 16 on the B string, pulling back. Sliding on the G string from the 15th to the 14th fret, and now we can sweep through the D string to the A string, but it's a more kind of slow tempo here, and we have 60 notes, so we can pick them as well. Then we are playing 15, 13, playing the 15th fret on the A string, sliding to 12, and then we are jumping from the 12th fret A string to the 17th fret A string, and playing 17, 15, 17, 15. Now comes a really cool sweep section. Now comes some little sweeps and first we are playing a G minor sweep. G minor 7 sweep. Uh, sorry, this one here. Where we're starting on the 17th fret and playing... Ah oh no, it's not, C, uh, it's not G minor, sorry, it's C minor 7. I'm playing 17, 16, 15, 18. And then we are playing G minor, the sun version here. And then we are playing the same one again, but we are not resolving to the D, we are resolving to the C on the 20th fret. So we have this kind of idea. And then we are playing again the C minor arpeggio and playing this kind of phrase. 
1570-15 as a drawer and 1815 on the B string. Which leads us to the next line and the next line is a really cool bluesy line which goes like this. And here we're starting bending from the 18th fret to the 20th fret, playing the same note but on this time on the E string, 15th fret. This kind of bluesy phrasing bending idea. Then we're playing those uh, eight notes with a flat five in it. It's kind of a G from the G minor blues pentatonic. And continuing chromatic, playing from the flat five to the minor third. And we're playing the root note, seven, root, minor third, fourth, and bending to the fifths. Which leads us to my favorite session of this lead solo, the sweeping section. Let me play those sweeps slow. Okay, and the cool thing about those sweeps are that we are basically using one inversion and one shape, the so-called C shape, and we are transforming them into different kind of chords and creating with that different kind of colors, which is really interesting. The chords in the background are still the same like from the samba progression, so E flat major, F major, D e flat major, and to G minor. So, but keep that in mind because it's really interesting from an, an analytical, analytical point of view. So in G minor is the first sweep arpeggio over E flat major and G minor over E flat major creates E flat major 7. Because we have the D in the arpeggio and the rest is G minor. Which is also notes or part of E flat major. So and we are doing the 5 string sweep arpeggio first. Then three string with the moving top note. Then we're going to E flat major. And then we are adding to the fifth the sixth here. The C. Oh, not the C, sorry. Oh, it's, it's a C, sorry. It's a C. Then we are playing F major because we are now also in the F major chord. Adding the 6 as well, and then we're going down to D, may, D minor. And D minor over F major creates F major 6. Because the D is the 6th interval of F, and the rest is also an F major. Then we are going to E flat major, and we are again back in E flat major. So this is a pretty cool, interesting move from the um, melody kind of, or from the internal melody of those Apache because we are moving descending. This is the internal melody. And here we are now, again in E flat major. And here again adding the 6. Now we are playing C minor and this creates E flat major 6. Oh, sorry. And then we are playing over the G minor, we are playing G minor. And this time it's the first time that we are playing a different inversion. We are playing the A shape now. If you aren't familiar with those 5 string sweep arpeggio shapes and the 3 string sweep arpeggio shapes, I re highly recommend to you to check out my uh, the shredding beginning beginning shredder the video was called beginning, beginning shredder the beginning shredder video the beginning shredder video where I teach the three string sweep arpeggios and the four and five string sweep arpeggio check them out here on YouTube so G and the A shape 
Again, first is five strings we have here. Then we are going to the next inversion. Three strings we have here, and the last inversion, which is also the same arpeggio like in the beginning. Coming to the next section where we are outlining the chords in a pretty cool way. And the next section, the last section of the solo goes like this. And we're starting off again with the E flat major and playing this shape here. So we have first this kind of E flat major arpeggio, adding the ninth to it when we're going descending. And then we have this kind of scale of the idea, which leads us to the next one over the F major, and here we're playing the following shape. Now this is from the fingering, the same shape, but on a different string set, but therefore we are not changing the chord in a different string set, we are changing the chord in a whole tone higher, um, we have a different approach from the intervals. Over the E flat major, we have major 7, root, fifths, major 7, and adding the 9s here. Now over the F, we have minor 3rd, uh, sorry, major 3rd, 4th, the E root, and the major 3rd, and adding the 5ths. Sorry. We're having a scale idea descending, uh, ascending, not descending this time. Now for the second time E flat major, Petrucci is playing. We're starting like in the first time, but in the second bar we are moving high to the 10th foot on the G string, playing 10, 12, 10, 15 on the E string, and then we are adding 14, 12, 10, 12, 14 on the G string, and 10, 13, 15, 13, 10 on the E string. This kind of Paul Gilbert inspired uh, arpeggio uh, string skipping idea. And for the G minor we have this idea. And here we are taking the same shape like in the E major and transforming it to B flat major, but thinking over the G minor, we are creating the 9th, the minor 3rd, the 7th and the 9th. Pretty cool G minor 9 kind of sound. So in the end we have this pattern here. Again, our classical two-note pattern, which is really typical for John Petrucci. And as the last one, we have another E flat major seven, and there we are playing this idea. Going to the B string, resolving to the 11th fret. Oh, I wanted to say elf again. 11th fret of the B string. And now we have the transition to our outro. First we have those big chords, really typical for John Petrucci. C, C sus2, B flat sus2, D flat sus2, and then going to S -O. Those reverse power chords, playing G, A flat, G flat. Now comes this diabolic sounding arpeggio idea with the open string in it. And here we have, we are fretting with our ring and our pinky, the fourth fret on the A string and the fourth fret on the D string, with our index finger, the second fret on the B string. And then we're playing A, D, G, D, B, G, D, G. Really typical. And then we are moving the C sharp here to a C, as well this C sharp here on the second fret to a C. And then we are going to the outro, and the outro is actually again our intro. So we have the intro again, the tapping section again, and then going straight to this idea again, our picking idea. And with that one, we are ending the song as well. And so we are finished with a complete lesson for Gemini. All right.